In this video, I'll explain how to find the oxidation numbers for each element in these nine compounds. The way to use the video, find the oxidation numbers for one of the compounds. Then you have the time for the video listed below. Go to that place in the video and check your work. When you're done, go back and try another one. They'll get harder as you go on, and that will help you practice and become an expert in calculating oxidation numbers. So these general rules will guide your work. The rules at the top, they're most important. Sometimes we'll ignore rules below if they're in conflict with the rule above. And we'll see that in the first problem. With the first one here, NO, nitrogen oxide, we'll use these rules to find the oxidation number for each element. The first thing we notice is that NO, nitrogen oxide, that's a neutral compound. There's no plus or minus sign up here like we find with ions. So in a neutral compound, all the oxidation numbers, they'll add up to zero. So we go down our list and we see here oxygen has a minus two oxidation number, except with fluorine and the peroxides. So we know oxygen is minus two and we know that all the numbers need to add up to zero because it's a neutral compound. So you can tell right away the nitrogen is going to be plus two. Plus two and minus two, that equals zero. So the oxidation number on the nitrogen, that's plus two. Our general strategy for finding oxidation numbers is to find the oxidation number for the one we know, the one we can find in our list, and use that to find the oxidation numbers for the other element. You might note that nitrogen's in group 15 or 5A, and it should have a minus three oxidation number. But remember we said if there's a conflict between the two oxidation numbers, we use the one that's higher in the list, in this case, oxygen. For N2O, that's dinitrogen monoxide, we have a neutral compound again. There's no plus or minus charge up here. So we know a neutral compound, all the oxidation numbers for each element, they're gonna add up to zero. We go down our list and the first one we see is oxygen. And oxygen has a minus two oxidation number with a few exceptions. We can also see nitrogens in group 15 or 5A and it's minus three. But because these numbers all have to add up to zero, we're going to ignore this rule because it's in conflict with the rules above it. So let's set up an equation to figure this out. Nitrogen, let's call that X. We don't know its oxidation number. And actually we have two nitrogens, so it's two X minus the two for the oxygen. That equals zero, because this is a neutral compound. When we solve for X, we find X equals a positive one. So the oxidation number on each nitrogen is positive one. And if we add all the oxidation numbers up, two times plus one, that's two, minus two, that equals zero, because the neutral compound here, they all add up to zero. For NO3 minus, the nitrate ion, we have this charge up here, a minus one charge. This is an ion. When we have an ion, the oxidation numbers for all the elements, they add up to the charge on the ion, to this minus one. So we'll go down our list here and we find there's oxygen minus two. And with that, we can find the oxidation number on the nitrogen by setting up an equation. Say nitrogen, we don't know that. X minus the two for the oxygen. We have the three oxygens. All of that equals the charge on the ion, the minus one. Solve for X. X equals a positive five. So the oxidation number on the nitrogen here is plus five. Again, our strategy here, find the element we know, and in this case, because it's an ion, all the oxidation numbers add up to the charge on the ion, and that lets us figure out the one we don't know. In this one, we have O2, oxygen gas, and these are a special case. When you have only one type of element, like Na, Fe, or H2, the oxidation number for the whole compound is zero. That's pretty much it for this one. Here we have ClF3, chlorine trifluoride. It's a neutral compound, so everything's going to add up to zero. And as we look down, fluorine is always minus one. So each one of these fluorines here is going to be minus one. So let's just set up our equation. We don't know chlorine, that's X minus one, three fluorines. And all of that is going to add up to zero since it's neutral. X that equals a positive three, and that's the oxidation number on the chlorine. 
We do see later in the rules that group 17, sometimes called 7a, and chlorine is in this group, it's a halogen, is minus one. But because this rule comes later than this rule for fluorine, we can ignore this rule. The rule to remember here, fluorine is always minus one. MnO4 two minus is another ion. In ions, all the oxidation numbers they add up to the charge on the ion. We go down our list, we're not going to see Mn, that's a transition metal, but we do know oxygen, that has a minus two oxidation number. And if we add up all the oxidation numbers, they'll be equal to the charge on the ion. So we say X minus two, we do have four oxygen atoms, equals minus two. Solve for X, X equals a positive six. So the oxidation number on the Mn plus Six. H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide, and peroxides are one of the exceptions we need to look out for with oxygen. We know it's a neutral compound, so in a neutral compound, all the oxidation numbers are going to add up to zero. So we go down our list, and here's hydrogen. When it's bonded to nonmetals, it's a plus one. So we have plus one for our hydrogen. Let's use that information along with the fact that this is a neutral compound, and they'll all add up to zero to find the oxygen. So we have one for the hydrogen, but we have two hydrogens, plus for the oxygens, we're gonna call that X, and we do have two oxygens. And the whole thing needs to equal zero. So we end up with two X equals minus two, X equals minus one, and the oxidation number on each oxygen is minus one. This is another case where we have the rule for a neutral compound and the rule for hydrogen before the rule for oxygen. Since the rule for oxygen would conflict with these rules above, we ignore this rule, and we use what we know about hydrogen and a neutral compound to find the oxidation number for the oxygens. For Cn minus, this is the cyanide ion, we have our negative charge, we know it's an ion, and that all the oxidation numbers are gonna equal this charge, this negative one. We look down our list, we don't see carbon. Eventually though, we do see group 15, sometimes called 5A, and that's where nitrogen's at. So nitrogen will have an oxidation number of minus three. Since we don't know carbon, we can set an equation up again. X for carbon minus three equals the charge on the ion minus one, and X equals a positive two. So the oxidation number for the carbon is plus two. Cr2O7 two minus is one you see quite often. We know it's an ion, it's got this two minus charge up here, and with the ions, all the oxidation numbers are gonna add up to the charge on the ion. We don't see Cr here in our list, but we do see oxygen, which is minus two. So let's set up our equation to find the Cr. We'll call Cr x, and we have two of them, so two x minus two, that's the oxidation number on the oxygen. We have seven oxygen atoms, and all of that needs to equal the charge on the ion this minus two here. So we have two X equals 12 and X equals six. So each one of the CR atoms here has an oxidation number of plus six. This last compound, ethanol, C2H5OH, is a bit of a challenge. You might be tempted to solve it like we did with the previous one. However, this molecule, it's not symmetrical. This carbon is attached to three H's. This carbon has two H's and then an OH. So we're gonna have different oxidation numbers on each of the carbons. So we know it's a neutral compound. There's no plus or minus. So everything has to add up to zero. Let's look down the list and see what we have. We have that hydrogen with nonmetals, carbon's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal, is plus one. So each one of the hydrogens is gonna be plus one. Oxygen, that's a minus two. So the way we'll do this, we'll treat each carbon separately to figure out the oxidation number. So here we have a plus one, two, three, plus three. So this carbon has to be minus three. That's its oxidation number. So for this carbon, it's got plus one, plus two, plus three, and then a minus two. So it needs to be a minus one for these oxidation numbers to add up to zero. A bit of a tricky one, but it's good to note that when you have a carbon, if these carbons are attached to different things, they'll have different oxidation numbers.
This is Dr. B with lots of practice for finding oxidation numbers and thanks for watching.